an innovative designer. What do you think about when you hear that kind of term? Innovation, innovative designer. What does that look like to scale? What does it look like when you actually try to pinpoint the process? So I've been trying to answer those questions for a number of years. In the space of design and in the space of education, I'm trying to figure out how to help students and really anybody interested in growing and developing skills that are really going to promote a powerful level of creativity. So in the summer, when ISTE updated their student standards and I saw that term, innovative designer, staring back at me, I was thrilled because now we're having a conversation about how to scale and how to define that process of becoming an innovative designer. So I'm gonna talk about that today. Hey everybody, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and today is Educated by Design. So, when you take a look at the ISTE standard number four, you see that this word innovative designer begins to take form in something that is very concrete. The challenge is, is that it's not something that can be achieved in a project. It's not something that can be achieved in a, in a month's worth of experimentation. You might not even be able to achieve it in a year. That's the challenge in which education is really up against, is how do we assess and support the growth of students in the short term, in that short span of a school year that we have with those children, and still set the foundation and really really sow the seeds that will grow and bloom and develop later down the line. That's where I feel that this standard really can shine and be a, a powerful moment. And it can also be intimidating and give you a feeling that you're not getting anywhere closer to it. So let's take a look at the four components that make up this standard. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit of my insights and experiences to try to really add some perspective to it and really some context. So the first one, ISTE coined this term deliberate design process. And I like that term. That is what design is. Design isn't creating a flyer or a project or some, some sort of media um, you know, concept. Design is a process of you taking a look at a challenge that you're facing in, in, a, in a series of very clear steps that you are looking for certain details to then synchronize together. And it could end up in you creating a visual media campaign, a product. But at the end of the day, there is a process, a thought process, a, a survey process, and a process of experimentation, and really a process of risk taking. Because there's a lot of unknowns. And if it's a true design process and not just some sort of, you know, process that we've, we've created a problem for them to solve, like a textbook full of math problems, right? We're actually trying to teach students design in an authentic way in which we give them an opportunity to survey and look around what areas in their life or in the life of others need to be supported. Number two, and this one's huge, right? Having a mastery over technology tools and media processes is so valuable. I can't stress it enough. When I began my journey as an educator, I was teaching a graphic design class. And this was a class that was required for students that were were UC, University California bound, they needed to have a art class. And many of them took it with a certain level of cynicism that a high school student has, where they thought it was interesting and maybe cool, but they never believed that they would ever use the skills that I was teaching them in Photoshop and Illustrator, the Adobe design software as a process, and then the way of thinking and looking at layout and color and the way in which fonts look and engage with with other fonts and 
three, four, five years after that, where they had already graduated college and had started their journey in their own professional careers, and I would see them on the street, and they would say, Rabbi Cohen, I totally use this now when I was working in a, a medical office, or I, I totally use that because I just passed the bar and I needed to create my entire brand in, in, as, as a lawyer or someone who was in business and sales knowing that they could create and stand out by developing content that would engage with their, their, their potential clients. So we, we have to really give students a space to master these tools and master the creative process so that they can apply it in their everyday life, their professional and personal careers. It's about giving, it's about providing a value for people. The individuals that you're supporting and the individuals that they could support later. So that, that mastery is huge. The other space that I think is really powerful on this ISTE standard is the, the calculated risk and, and constraints of design when you have a set project deadline. In the real world, deadlines exist. And if you're late, they, you don't get a, a second chance sometimes. You have to ship it, and that's important. So teaching students how to understand deadlines, limitation, limitations, resources, and then calculating the level of risk that they can take, that if it doesn't work out, can they still rebound from that and continue on to achieve the success that they need to achieve? Number three, and this is actually one of the hardest parts of designing in a K-12 space, and that is the testing, the prototyping, and the refining. I talk a lot about reflection in the work that I do. We just don't have time, and that's the bottom line. You have to have a level of empathy for educators. For someone to tell them reflection and refining products when there are very clear expectations, very clear standards that need to be met, and coverage of content, coverage of curriculum. For you to say stop and dedicate even a day to looking at the way in which something could improve. So we gotta hack that process, we gotta be creative. So I know that some people don't like homework and I don't like it myself. I didn't like doing it as a kid and my own children, I, I'm not so um, stringent on their, 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 their work in that, in that space of homework. I feel like they're in school all day, they're working, they need a chance to just be kids and enjoy life. But if you're creating a space where students are genuinely passionate about the work they're doing and you show them how these skills, the, this design process and the, all of the experiences surrounding what they're engaged in is real world and could be valuable and worth developing, they might consider refining and reflecting on it in their own personal space and then maybe they come back to you and present that. At the end of the day, a, a truly good designer is not creating something and then shipping it. There is a refine and reflective process that you, you have to have to truly be a designer. And that, that's just the bottom line. Number four, and this goes for everybody. If, you say, if you're saying right now, I mean, the truth is, if you're still watching this and you're still saying to yourself, well, I'm not a designer, I don't feel like I'm a designer, but maybe my students want to be a designer, so I want to stick with it and I want to hear more. The fourth standard is understanding and embracing and knowing what to do with ambiguity. As a society, we struggle with ambiguity. In education, I can't tell you how many times I, I feel that the roadblock that I see when I survey the way in which the education process unfolds in classrooms, everyone struggles with ambiguity. The unknown is uncomfortable. There has to be this level of, of perseverance and of confidence that if you just continue to advance forward, you will be able to succeed. And so one of the spaces that I, I just actually shared out on some Instagram stories was resourcefulness. Do you know where to look and who to look to? 
as an education professional? Do your students know where to look to and who to look to to succeed? I can't tell you how many times I engage with individuals and conversations where they, they actually say to me, you know, I thought you knew everything. And they didn't mean it like that I literally know everything. But in the spaces where things are ambiguous and I deal well with it, it seems like I know everything. But the truth is I just know where to look to and who to look to. It's important for us to really start this conversation of design as a skill set and it's almost a design literacy. It, li it is a literacy in which our students really need to develop and master because design is found everywhere because what design is, it's engaging with other people. And so that could manifest in a bunch of different ways. But design is really this process of looking at people, looking at challenges and trying to solve them in a clear process that anybody can benefit from and anybody can help others benefit from. So that's today's conversation about what it means to be an innovative designer. Do I think that ISTE really hit the mark on scaling and concretizing what a potential innovative designer or what a, what a potential, potential innovation that a designer could produce? I do. I think that they did a terrific job of really capturing a, a pretty solid snapshot of what it takes to be a good designer. Now what's the challenge for the students and the teachers that are supporting this process, that are nurturing it is, you have to be resourceful. You need to tap out of education and look to people in the design space of marketing, media, and innovation, technology, and look at what they're doing. That is what I think is really important. I think is really missing from education. And I'm actually gonna dedicate an entire episode of this vlog to talking about ways in which educators can tap out of education to tap back into education. So that was today's Educated by Design episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, please share this out, please like this video, and give me your thoughts and feedback. Give me your criticisms. Challenge me to be able to communicate these ideas in a more concrete, less ambiguous way so that everybody can gain something from it. Thanks for watching.